Hello and welcome to my review of The Sunset Warrior, a 1977 novel and the first in a trilogy that was later expanded to five novels. The author is Eric Van Lust Bader, I'm going with Bader because Douglas Bader is spelt similar, who has more than 40 novels to his name, including 11 that continued the Jason Bourne series that was started by Robert Ludlum. The story is a post-apocalypse dystopia taking place in an underground civilization where the people have fled after the surface was made inhospitable by the previous civilization. The Sunset Warrior follows a bladesman called Ronin, the only warrior in an underground civilization that is unaffiliated with any of the lords of that freehold. Ronin discovers that the freehold is falling apart and begins an adventure to save his people. Let's get into the plot and you can use the slider or the chapters in the description to skip this section if you wish, but none of this review should be considered spoiler free. Ronin begins the story seeking treatment from the Freehold's medicine man after being ambushed by fellow bladesmen after training. The injury is apparently life-threatening, but the treatment seems simple enough, and when the medicine man is required to attend to a dying mage, Ronin tags along. The mystery deepens, though, when it is clear that the magician has been drugged and interrogated. It is also clear that the machines of the Freehold are breaking down and that nobody knows how to fix them. Ronin is attacked again at the communal lunch, this time by his own friend Gafand, who is troubled by the general circumstances of the Freehold. The mage, in a lucid moment, tells Ronin that the Freehold is in danger and that he must travel to the lowest levels to find a book that can help. He says that there is trouble brewing between the lords of the Freehold and, if Ronin doesn't return in time, then a civil war will begin. Ronin enlists Gafand and the two find the lower levels in a murderous chaos and lower still a deserted city beneath the Freehold that is full of monsters. They do find the book, but on the return journey one of the monsters kills Gafand. Returning alone, Ronin finds the civil war is now inevitable and that the mage has disappeared onto the inhospitable planet's surface. The book ends there and the story is continued in the sequel The Shallows of Night, which I have not read. This is a short text coming in at under 200 pages with none of them particularly dense, yet it still contains two very distinct sections. The first takes place in the stronghold and introduces a handful of characters while creating an interesting world that gradually builds up the dual threat of mechanical collapse and civil war. Van der Spada writes in the third person, almost exclusively in a restricted style that follows Ronin, who is clearly a far more important figure to the warlords than even he realises. His distracted nature imperils him a fair bit, and while useful as a plot device and one assumes a weakness to overcome in future instalments, it does make him a slightly strange choice for the attention he receives from the Salamander, a mysterious trainer of warriors. It's not completely perfect and rather underplays the mysterious rodent that his best friend is called away to investigate, but it is well paced and engrossing. The second half of the story follows Ronin as he looks for the book beneath the freehold. On the way down, the lower levels are depicted as truly grim with one mother mistaking Ronin and Gafan for attackers, cutting her own child's throat to save her from them. But there really isn't that much done with these levels and Ronin immediately heads to the bottom level and the descriptions of the machines at that level is repetitive and it makes it sound a little baffling, perhaps intentionally. The city at the bottom is an interesting place with lots of oddities about it, but even in a novel this short I began wondering what the point of it all was. Perhaps there is stuff in sequels to explain it, or at least to explain why the monster attacked them and defeated them both, only to then leave them and then attack them again on the way back. Under the circumstances, it is probable that it understood their quest and, unable to enter the building for some reason, let them complete it in order to steal the loot, that mysterious book. But this line is all you get, and it isn't enough to make a firm deduction. Just before unconsciousness came, he thought the creature looked towards the recesses of the interior, then he, he passes out, wakes up, and the creature has spared them. Nor is it especially great to create a monster that is basically impervious to standard weapon attacks, and yet have it defeated by them anyway. The rest of the story really deserves a more thoughtful resolution to their fight. While Ronan's absent-mindedness is at odds with his assertion that I'm trained to kill and stay alive, it is nice to see a character that isn't just inexplicably brilliant at everything. In fact, as a personal weakness, it's nice to see it having a consistent bearing on the story. With the only criticism being that everyone keeps saying what a great warrior he is when he keeps walking into ambushes. 
He is just a warrior though, and his assertion that being forced into the life means he is mediocre explains some of his faults. It's also nice to see a hero who is extraordinary, of course, but not superhuman. When he gets hit, it hurts, and the effects add to the hardship of his activities. Ronin is flawed, but mostly quite real, and some genuine peril is nice to read. Added to that, Gafand is no warrior, and though game, needs Ronin's protection. He becomes honourable. The sad thing is that, to an extent, Van Lisbada does undercut this somewhat, when a mystic Ronin encounter states that he is about to discover the impermanence of death. I truly hope that this doesn't undo the deaths that add weight and impact to the final act. Although it's quite likely the mystic is likely just talking about Ronin's sister, Van Lisbada really could have done a lot more with that. She gets two or three mentions, none more than a few lines, and if you were to seek support by talking to an imagined supportive spirit, for example, or even just thinking what she would have done in certain circumstances, or just of her more often, adding to his distractions, it really could have built up the finale's twist a little more. With so much set up for future novels, it seems strange to feel the need to end that story there, rather than build it up a bit more. The story that should have been continued here is the one around the disappeared mage, who, if he believed the book Ronan went for was truly that valuable, would surely have at least tried to wait for him to return with it. The supporting cast are mostly solid, apart from the strange subterranean mystic who talks in cliches like, I will know that only after it is done. These are designed to say nothing much and keep mysteries he's supposed to be helping with hidden. What's interesting is that this novel came out in the same year as Star Wars and also adopts a slight Asian flavour, not just in the protagonist's name. But is it just me that detects a hint of Yoda in Bonaducci the Last? The last good leader as well? The Sunset Warrior was Van Lisbada's debut novel, and while the plot might be a little meandering in the second half, it is well written nonetheless. The action scenes are generally tight and exciting. The dual Ronin fights about halfway through is handled really well, given the focus it needs to feel substantial as a key character moment while retaining some excitement. There would be a real danger of his second duel in the finale being a mere repeat, even given the different foe, but that isn't the case. And while Ronan's inopportune sexual arousal is a little bit of an authorial misjudgment and the betrayal is a little predictable, it still works. I really gave that one the hard sell, didn't I? Another part I thought was really well done was the scene in the dark section of the underground city. It's genuinely creepy and comes just as I was beginning to lose interest in that part of the story. The unnerving sense isn't just made creepy by sibilance like this one. Silence seeps sluggishly, but it's a longish scene and genuinely gripping, given time to truly hook the reader in with the question of whether the danger is real or imagined and finally breaking the icy courage of Ronan. But it was hard, the cobble slippery and suddenly insubstantial. The breath pounding in their lungs, small chitterings assailed them and heavy slitherings from behind them, gruntings and weird moanings so that the backs of their necks crawled. Tears seemed to be streaming from Gafan's eyes. The streets closed in upon them and the stone creatures above the head proliferated, flocking on the overhanging ledges. There's so much going on in this passage, but what is really remarkable is how, even though Van Lusbader is writing in the past tense, he manages to use all those infinitives, non-finite verbs, gerunds and present participles to almost affect a tense change and make things feel so urgent. This scene saved the book for me when the second half started to drag. Later in the novel, when Ronan experiences a vision, Van Lusbada actually does change the verb tense for the scene. The vision, though, isn't a patch on the dark section. Likewise, the anaphora here is futile in creating a mood because it comes at the very start of the scene, while in the second extract it is used as Ronan struggles to retain consciousness when fighting for his life and is far more effective. In conclusion, the second half of The Sunset Warrior seems to be trying to set up a number of characters and situations for the sequels, and as such, the story becomes less focused and less interesting. It seems strange to work so hard, building up the world inside the freehold, only to then move the story somewhere a lot less interesting. The rush through the middle levels and the scant exploration of what would drive a mother to murder her own child, or what that actually means for the rest of the freehold, is a good example of this. The lower levels are much more of a fantasy cliche and so are the monsters, buildings and other characters that inhabit them. The characters that work are those in the freehold that are honourable but need protecting or those that may or may not have their own agenda. 
first half of this book is fraught with tension that the second half, aside from the dark section of the city, doesn't match. Ronan is a decent protagonist with a genuine character fault, a rare thing in more modern times, but it is the question marks over the innocence of the characters that surround him that makes him work so well. Overall, the Sunset Warrior, with just the occasional misstep, hits the mark. It is well written enough to be tense and exciting in the scenes where it needs to be, and places a solid lead in an interesting fantasy world. Recommended. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and if you ring the bell, I will see you in the next one. Bye. Great cover too.